Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. Today we have a shoe that went way beyond my expectations, and this is the Shadow 6 from Way of Weight. So retail price should be the same as before, 119 US dollars. Uh, that's how much the Shadow 5 and Shadow 5 V2 were on their official site. Uh, when they release, I'll make sure to drop a link uh, in the description box uh, where to get them. While we're here, I just want to say this. I'm not saying they did, but even if they increased the price by a little bit, I wouldn't be mad. And this says a lot because I'm usually on the cheaper side as a consumer. The reason is these return the performance level of an $160 to $180 shoe. Some of the most expensive hoop shoes on the market aren't even as good as these, based on my personal experience. I had my mother-in-law bring these to me from Hong Kong, by the way, in case you're wondering how I bought them. Also, that means we threw away the shoe box, but they just come in the standard black way of weight box as usual. Anyways, a lot to talk about on how these guys do on the court. Uh, in like three major aspects, this is just deliciousness. I'll make sure to include some comparisons to previous versions and other shoes along the way. Uh, let's get right into it. As to how the Shadow 6 performs, Cushion is easily an A+. Huge surprise. I mean, they had no reason to be this good. They gave us full lens boom, which is Li Ning and Wave Wave's flagship technology. Not just on a portion of the missile, like only a small piece up front or 75% boom, like the Fission 9 and Ice Blood 2, but it's 100% boom. This underfoot cushion feels soft, responsive, comfy, and very bouncy all at the same time. For those who haven't tried this setup before, I would basically describe it as being similar to a full lens boom setup from Adidas. Yeah, the bottom half of the shoe feels so much like the Harden Volume 6. The foam provides a good amount of feedback. It has excellent shock absorption, so landings are safe, hard impacts, no problem at all. The heel presses down by a good amount. I do feel that same type of energy return in the forefoot too. I mean, even from Way of Way, they previously still only gave us this setup on the Way of Way 10 and Way of Way 11, the flagship model going for $225. The All City line at around mid tier pricing, this is one of their cheapest shoes available. They didn't have to be this nice, but they did it. I think we gotta give them credit for that. If you think about it, when do we get full lens zoom strobo on a Nike shoe around this price? Most of their signature shoes don't even get the best type treatment. They thrive by attaching names and creating hype for the most part. The Shadow 6 somehow has a premium setup. We're not done. From the bottom, you can see through the translucent also that there is a fork-shaped support plate to give you more of a springy effect on feet and help with the stability too. You might be able to tell that given how bouncy and dynamic the underfoot cushion feels, core feel isn't the low to the ground type. But transitioning from front to back is still very smooth. It's not like the Fresh One BB V2, let's say, where it might be too high off the ground for some people. Uh, weight is still on the lighter side. My US size 10 and a half pair comes to 370 grams on the scale. A little bit lighter than I expected, actually. I was guessing maybe 390 grams or closer to 400 before I measured them. That's probably because they're slightly bottom heavy. Well, it is fully loaded underneath, so I'm just super impressed by how nice the cushion feels and how light the shoe is at the same time. Traction has been really good based on my experience. This colorway does have a translucent also. It's squeaky most of the times, but it's not like a consistently loud and sharp squeak all the time. Again, that's just a sound effect, only if you care about it. The grip was fantastic even on a dusty court. For me, the Shadow 5, I needed a good amount of time for the also to break in, and then it started becoming grippy. This, I was able to get to a hard stop right from the start. 
but just for the record, if I was to do a side-by-side -side comparison, the GCU also on the Wave Weight 11 and All City 12 Encore is still even better. The Shadow 6 has an irregular brain-like pattern or tree branches. I don't know how to describe that. Anyways, my complaint here is that on the very tip of the also, there's a tiny part up front that has no grooves on it. Uh, it might sound like a nitpicking, but hey, four foot traction is super important, especially if you do a lot of aggressive cuts or change of direction. For me, this might be a nine or nine and a half out of 10 already, but GCU is close to perfect. According to their product description, this is their tough RV also, meaning that it should be durable enough for outdoor use. Uh, it doesn't say that anywhere on the also this time though. Based on how it feels in hand and some outdoor wear, I would say it looks like a shoe that can last quite a long time for us. Indoor and outdoor friendly, yes. With the fit, I went true to size this time. True to size is a very snug fit, however. So if you prefer to have a more spacious fit or if you have very wide feet, you can go up a half size to be safe. I have slightly wider feet. True to size is almost too tight but manageable. Wave Weight shoes, I still think, when in doubt, go half size up. But with their Wave Weight 11 and All City 12 Encore, I have the same shoe in both my true size and half size up. Comparing the two options, going true to size fits better in those two. Width is right around average, I would say. Not too narrow, but also not crazy wide. Nope. Yeah, nothing too special to note here. Lengthwise, my pair locks in my heel perfectly back there. So there's no heel slippage at all. Not much dead space in the toe box either. Now, something that I actually consider as a bonus here is the design of the laces. These texture laces look weird. Uh, from a far angle, I actually thought it was just tangled up at first, but it's made this way on purpose and it does work. Having these pearls or dots actually ensures that the laces don't fall loose, so you don't have to worry about frequently retying them. The amount of distance between each spot is perfect too, so once you tie them up, it just stays in place nicely. Brilliant idea, these ripple laces. So go true to size for a snug and secure fit Wide footers, you can do half size up. Moving on to the material, another strong aspect of the Shadow 6. I think they really nailed it right in the sweet spot, especially compared to the previous versions. Uh, the Shadow 4 is just a standard mesh, a little bit flimsy. Shadow 5 was very different. It became a lot more supportive to hold up well for heavier players, but it comes at the cost of softness and plush feeling being sacrificed. So the 5 was kind of stiff. Some minor pinching in the beginning too. 5v2 is super breathable, but the way it wraps around your feet won't be able to compare against these. Here on the 6, everything was good to go. This is a smooth and conforming leather covering the toe box and also surrounding the majority of the upper. Uh, you don't have to worry about anywhere hurting your feet or this taking a while to break in. Very soft. I was pretty much good to go right from the start. I've seen some of you report a pinching issue on the All City 12 Encore uh, near the stitching that connects those panels. That I didn't have. But on the Shadow 6, the only thing I remember is the very first time I put them on, um, near the inner side of the forefoot, like this area right here, it really felt like a cardboard stuffed in there. Only on my right foot, like around the toe box. But that immediately went away as soon as I actually started playing in them. It's been a very comfortable ride ever since. The ventilation holes ensure good breathability. A common issue on leather uppers is the amount of airflow, but not a problem here. My feet didn't heat up too much even after an extra long sesh. Now if I was to point out a downside here, the way the upper bends or folds, it is prone to creasing. In performance terms, the concern isn't how wrinkled they look, that it's the shape of the upper. If it starts to loosen up fairly quickly, then you lose the stability and rigidity to keep your feet in position. I don't know if that makes sense. So far, it's just a small concern I have. It's not like I actually had this problem occur to me already. So something to monitor for an update later on, I guess. On hard lateral movements, my feet were contained perfectly fine inside. Extremely flat feet like mine will have a blast still. Check mark. Kobe 4 resemblance I don't know if you can see it, but I can. Design-wise, I think this might be a very polarizing aspect. 
you probably either really like these or just hate how they look. Uh, I would say the placement of the big logo on the back of the missile is at least something new. I remember in the comment section, uh, one person made a condom reference for the All City 12 logo, and I just could not see it. So don't do it to me here, all right? I see it as a cool touch here. Taking the circle away from the exterior, you can argue that without this big logo right here, there might not be too much excitement. Um, printed on the line at the back, those are significant years to D-Wade, I believe. Year when he was born, year when he was drafted in 03, uh, those three are the championship years in Miami. Uh, year he retired, and this year, today. 2024. There's gonna be a few other colorways. I think the white pair is clean. Triple white could have made it better in my opinion. Like crystal clear. Black one is nice too. It gives it a whole different feeling. Liberty and another white colorway with some blue on it. Those three come in a solid rubber also. So I might be getting one of those too later on. Overall, not only is this insane value for the price, it's also one of the top performers this year. Even if we take out the affordability factor. I mean, we've gone over all the specific features. Uh, I still wonder if they made a mistake here because we're getting full lens boom, a nice support plate, tough RB, smooth upper, extra design perks like on the laces. What's going on? Now that's money well spent for me. And I didn't even spend that much because the shadow line is budget friendly, as you guys know. For comparisons, previous versions, not even close. Not saying that those aren't good, but the 4, 5, and 5v2 just aren't the same tier. Within Wave Wade, at the same price, yes, I would take these over the Fission 9 and Ice Blood 2. The cushioning setup and bounciness alone can beat those two by a good spread. Also, the Fission 9 is really wide and the Ice Blood 2 is really narrow. The fit here on the Shadow 6 is right in between. Easy choice for most people. Is it better than their All City 12 Encore and Wave Weight 11? Oh man, uh, the Encore has already been one of my favorite shoes this year. Let me just say this, it all depends on your budget because they are three completely different price points. The overall performance and functionality of the Shadow 6 does not lose to those two at the highest standards. Maybe I'll put up another video comparing all their current products soon. If I was to describe these using shoes from other brands, Kobe 4 Upper, Jordan 37-ish bounciness, Harden Volume 6, underfoot cushion. This missile setup reminds me so much of the Harden's. As always, I'd love to know how you feel about the Shadow 6, so let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you uh, next time.